Welcome to the Cosmos Distinguished Lecture Series for 2014. I'm Abby Thompson. I'm a professor of mathematics, and I'm the director of the UC Davis Cosmos program. We're really pleased to be able to share these exceptional lectures with the public. Please take a minute to turn off your cell phones. I saw about 200 of them in here before. Um, and let me introduce today's speaker. Arthur Benjamin received his PhD from Johns Hopkins in 1989. He's been a professor at Harvey Mudd College since then, where he served as department chair from 2002 to 2004. His honors and awards for his mathematics and his unique teaching are too numerous to list, but here's a selection of a few of the most amazing. He's won two of the Mathematical Association of America's highest honors. In 2000, he won the National HAMO Prize for Excellence in Teaching. And in 2006, he was selected as the Polia Lecturer for 2006 to 2008. Dr. Benjamin has presented to audiences all over the world and has appeared on many television and radio programs, including the Today Show, CNN, National Public Radio, and the Colbert Report. He has been written up in the New York Times, the Los Angeles Times, USA Today, Scientific American, Discover, Omni, Esquire, Reader's Digest, and People Magazine. Princeton Review profiled him in their recent book, The Best 300 Professors. In 1997, Dr. Benjamin applied his talents to the game of backgammon and won the American Backgammon Tour. He's the author of numerous books and DVD courses that share the beauty and magic of mathematics. He's given three TED Talks, which have been viewed over 10 million times. And I believe he's unique among mathematicians for having a line on his webpage that says, click here to see my recent performances. Please join me in welcoming Arthur Benjamin. Thank you, Abby. Well, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Art Benjamin, and I am a mathemagician. What that means is I combine my loves of math and magic to do something I call mathemagics. But before I get started with anything mathematical, I thought I'd begin with a magic trick. It has nothing to do with math, really. It's just a really cool trick. But for this, I'll need a volunteer to assist me. Someone here I do not know. And all right, how about you, sir? What's your name? Let's give Michael a nice round of applause. Coming up here, Michael. <laughs> Michael, if you would stand right there. Now, before I begin, Michael, I have an important question to ask. Have we ever met before? No. no. <laughs> you seem proud of that fact. But that's good. Because, Michael, I'm going to show you and everyone here a card trick that has never been seen before. Never been seen before because no one can see the cards. Michael, if you would, pick a card, any card at all, from the deck. Just take one. OK, good. Look at the card, show it to everyone, but do not let me see it. All right? I will shuffle the rest of the cards. So you see they're not in any particular order. Michael, I'd like you to place the card back inside the deck. But just to make it interesting, turn the card upside down first. Upside down, please, just like that. Good. Notice all the cards are face up, except for Michael's, which is face down. Now watch carefully, as this took me years of practice. Watch, watch, watch. That's a watch. <laughs> as I make the deck of cards disappear from my hand reappear inside of this box, a box which only moments ago, Michael, was empty. Trust me. <laughs> now, I realize, Michael, what you were doing just a moment ago was just a figment of your imagination. But what was the card, for that brief second at least, that you imagined that you selected? Michael, what card did you imagine? The seven of diamonds. That's amazing, Michael, because you'll notice in this deck that one card and only one card has been turned upside down. Would you be so kind as to show everyone the upside down card? The seven of diamonds. And let's give Michael a nice round of applause. Thank you, Michael. Great. 
Well, while you're trying to figure that one out, I have another question for the audience. By any chance, did anyone happen to bring with them this afternoon a calculator of some kind, perhaps on your phone or something? If you have one with you and you're comfortable using it, raise your hand. I need just a few people to help me out. Okay, one and two and three and four. Would the four of you bring out your calculators, join me up here on stage, and let's give these volunteers a nice round of applause. Over on this side, please. Fantastic. Now, since I have not had the chance to work with these calculators, I need to first make sure that they are all working properly. Uh, would somebody get us started by giving out, calling out a two-digit number, please? How about a two-digit number? 38. And another two-digit number, please. 53. Multiply 38 times 53. Make sure you get 2014 exactly, or 2014, how about that? Or your calculators are not working. Do each of you get 2014, 2014, 2014? Give them a round of applause. 2014, that's pretty cool. Now, I notice that took some of us a little time to get the answer. I'll give you a shortcut for multiplying even faster on the calculator. There's something called the square of a number, which you all know is taking a number and multiplying it by itself. For instance, 5 squared would be 25. 6 squared would be 36. 73 squared would be something bigger, right? Now, most, most of your calculators, I notice, have squaring buttons on them that'll solve the problems even faster. What I'm going to try and do now is to square in my head four two-digit numbers faster than they can do on their calculators, even using the shortcut method. What I'll ask is four people here in the second row, one, two, three, four, to each yell out a two-digit number. And if you would square the first, the second, the third, and the fourth one, I will try and race you to the answer. So quickly, a two-digit number, please. 86, you say? OK, next. 46, OK, next. 97, and one more. 56. Would you call out your answers, please? 7396. 7396. 2116. 9409. And finally, give them a round of applause. <laughs> Let me try to take this one step further. I'm going to try to square some three-digit numbers this time. I won't even write these down. I'll just call them out as they're called out to me. Anyone I point to, call out a three-digit number. Anyone on our panel, verify the answer. If I get the answer right, give me a thumbs up. If I make a mistake, let me know, and I'll try and fix it. A three-digit number, uh, go ahead, sir. 626 squared is 391,876. 391876. Great. How about another three digit number, sir? 839. 839 is uh, seven, let me try again. Uh, 703,921. 703,921. Good. How about another three digit number, please? 123. 123 is 15,129. 15,129. Good. One more three digit number. Go ahead. 989 is 978,121. Thank you very much. Let me try to take this one step further. I'm going to try to square a four-digit number this time. I'm not going to beat you to the answer on this one, but I will try to get the answer right. I'll even write this one down in case I need it. Um, how about the third row? If you can each give me a single digit between 0 and 9, that will be the four-digit number that I'll square. 8, 6, 7, 7. 8, 6, 7, 7. This will take me. A little bit of time, so bear with me. 75 million. <sighs> Good. Thank you very much. Now, I would attempt to square a five digit number, and I can, but unfortunately, some calculators cannot. What can you do? <laughs> Although I think most of you, yeah, yeah, yours can. I know. I'll talk to you later. Uh, <laughs> but in the meanwhile, let me conclude the first part of my show by trying something a little trickier, 
Let's take the last number on the, let's make it an even number. Let's take 8676. Would you each enter 8676 on your calculator? And instead of squaring it this time, I'd like you to take that number and multiply it by any three digit number that you'd like. But don't tell me what you're multiplying by. Just multiply it by any random three digit number. So you should have as an answer either a six digit or probably a seven digit number. How many digits, Eddie, are in your answer? Six or seven digits? Seven, 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 seven and seven. Is there any possible way that I could know what seven digit numbers they have? Say no. no. Good. Then I shall attempt the impossible, or at least the improbable. What I'd like each of you to do is to call out for me any six of your seven digits, any six of them, in any order you'd like. One digit at a time, I shall try and determine the digit you've left out. So starting with your seven digit number, call out any six of them, please. Seven, five, four, five, three, two. Did you leave out the number two? Yes, that's one. You've got a seven digit number, call out any six of yours, loud and clear. Hmm. Having a little bit of trouble with this one. Let me get back to you. Don't forget your number. You've got a seven digit number called any six of yours in any order. <coughs> Did you leave out the number seven? No. Let me hear your six. Leave out the same number. Call out your other six digits, please. I'm going to ask you a favor. Um, take your number, divide it by the original number, 8676. OK, divide it by 8676. Do you get a whole number as your answer? You do. I'm very puzzled. OK, multiply it by 8676 again. I have to hear this one more time. And go, you have a seven digit number, right? Call out six of the seven in any order. You left out the number seven, right? No. All right, I, I do occasionally make mistakes, like picking the wrong people, but, <laughs> but we'll, I'll, I'll figure that out later. Finally, you've got a seven digit number. Any six of yours, really scramble them up this time. Uh, four, seven, zero, zero, nine, one. Hmm, did you leave out the number six? Yes, I'm getting a little nervous, but okay. Finally, you got a seven digit number. Did, did you realize the, the mistake or the discrepancy? Yeah, but it's still not seven. <laughs> Who knows? All right, finally, you've got a six digit number. Call out any, a seven digit number. Now, now, you've told me your six digits. Do me a favor this time, if you would, concentrate on the digit you left out. It doesn't do any good, it just looks dramatic. <laughs> and yet, I seem to be getting a lot of nothing. Uh, did you leave out a zero there? Because I'm getting a lot of nothing. You'll have to think harder. OK, I'm going to get it this time. You left out the number nine. Excellent. And let's give all four of these people a nice round of applause. Thank you very much. Thank you. Huh. Let me see your answer there. I'm really puzzled here. I'm really puzzled. Oh, OK. Well, then, oh, 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 so this time, in other words, you'd multiply by a different number the first time. Yeah, I I right, OK. That makes sense. That's OK. We, that's fine. At, least, at least I understand where the error came from. Um, so uh, for my next number, as they say, I'd like to present something we mathemagicians refer to as magic squares. Um, now, for those of you who are unfamiliar with these, you can think of magic squares as kind of like Sudoku on steroids. Now, I have done such an extensive study on magic squares that I'd like to create one for all of you right before your very eyes. But for this, I'll need another assistant, someone here I do not know. And OK, how about you? What's your name? Let's give Camille a nice round of applause. Come up here, Camille. Right there. 
Now, Camille, let me ask you a question. And if it's too personal, I can change the question. Camille, are you willing to share with us your birthday, including the year? Yes. Great. Camille, what is your birthday? March 26, 1997. 3 26 97. That's your birthday. Camille, if we were to add the numbers in your birthday together, let's see, 3 plus 26 is 29, plus 9 is 38, plus 7 is 45. So 45 becomes your magic number. Camille, what I'm going to try and do now is to fill out this box in such a way as to get your magic number appearing here as much as I possibly can. This will take me a couple of seconds, so bear with me here. I think that works. Camille, would you choose for us any row? Row number two, three, or four, which would you like? Three. All right, class, together. Eight plus 10 is 18, plus 25 is? 43 plus 2 is 45. Those were 3, 29, 38, 45, 8, 16, 18, 45, 26, 27, 36, 45. Would you choose a column, Camille? 1, 2, 3, or 4? 2. All right, class, together. 26 plus 8 is 34. Plus 10 is 44. Plus 1 is 45. Those were 3, 11, 19, 45, 9, 11, 36, 45, 7, 34, 36, 45. How about that? <laughs> Now, Camille, I'm not through with you. I decided since this was your magic square based on your birthday, at no extra charge, I would give you these diagonals as well. Check it out here. 26 plus 10 is 36, plus 2 is 38, plus 7 is 45, 3, 11, 36, 45. But I didn't stop there either. I decided since this was for Camille, wouldn't it be great if we could get these four in the center to add up as well? Check it out here. 8 plus 2 is 10, plus 25 is 35, plus 10 is 45. But did I stop there? Did I stop there? No. Camille, you may have noticed I put a little extra attention in that corner. I did that so I could get these four squares. 3 plus 26 is 29, plus 8 is 37, plus 8 is 45 to add up. And I figured, heck, as long as we got that group of four, let's have a party. We may as well get this group of four. 9, 16, 43, 45, 8, 18, 19, 45, 25, 27, 36, 45. But did I stop there? No, I said Camille wouldn't be happy unless we got this group of four, 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 this group of four. Now, I have to apologize, Camille. I was not able to get this group of four nor that group of four to add up, but I had to do it that way if I was going to get these four in the corners. I knew that would be important to you. 3, 10, 19, 45. But wait, here's the cool part. Camille, not only do those four numbers in the corners add to 45, if you look at them closely, you'll see we have 3, 26, 97. I was able to give you your birthday twice. I thought you'd like that. So please keep this as a souvenir from me, and let's all give Camille a nice round of applause. Thank you very much. Thank you. Hey, speaking of birthdays, by any chance, does anyone here happen to know the day of the week that they were born on? If you think you know your actual birth day, raise your hand. All right, starting with you, what year, if I may? Yes. Uh, 96, and what month? December. December what? Third. Third, was that a Tuesday? Yes, it was. Excellent. Who else uh, do we have here? How about you, what year? 2000, and what month? February what? 5th, was that a Saturday? Yes, good. How about, uh, how about you, sir, in the green? Sure, well, that's, yeah, what year? 1997. 97, and the month? May, May what? 25th. 25th, was that a Sunday? Excellent, and how about yours, what year? 97, and the month? June what? 13, did you say? That was a Friday, right? Friday the 13th, stay away from her. Uh, do we have anyone here who perhaps does not know the day of the week they were born but would like to find out? Okay, I saw your hand go up first. Now, of course, if you don't know what it is, I could just make up an answer, and you'd probably believe me, right? And we'd be, with, we'd be within three days, I'm sure. But luckily, there are apps for everything these days, and here I'll ask one of you to help me here. All you have to do is type in the year, and the rest is self-explanatory. What year would you like? Or what year are you, actually? 
So type in 1998 and uh, what month? March, press the March button and look at the calendar below and March what? 19, would you believe that's actually my birthday, March 19th? Not, not yours, your, and yours is a Thursday, right? Is it a Thursday? I was on a Sunday, but I was on March 19th, which is pretty cool. In fact, the last birthday, December 3rd, that was called out was actually my daughter's, my older daughter's birthday. So there's some kind of karma in the air. But um, clearly, now let's try something. Since you have the app with you, let's try something that I don't often get a chance to do. The app will go as far back into the past as the year 1600, and as far into the future as the year 3000. So give me any year between 1600 and 3000. What year would you like? 1700 even, OK. And uh, what month would you like? June what? 13th? Was that a Sunday? And it was cloudy, I think. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. In fact, anyone else who wants to find out their birthday, see me after the show, I'll be more than happy to tell you. Um, now, folks, if I were performing for a different sort of audience, like, say, at the Magic Castle in Hollywood, as I occasionally do, I might follow this up with other feats of magic and mind. But for an audience such as this one, I actually prefer to break the magician's rule and explain to you most of what you've seen me do up here and more. In fact, I'd like to conduct the rest of this program, the next 30, 35 minutes or so, very informally. So feel free at any time to interrupt me with questions, even if it has nothing to do with what I'm talking about. It's more interesting that way. In fact, I've got hours and hours of stuff I could share with you, but, but less than that time here. So why don't I start taking your questions right now what is it you're interested in? I see your hand up in the back, so you can get the first question, sir. Where are you wearing your shirt from? Where are you my shirt from? Uh, this, this Cosmo shirt, if you read the fine print, says UC Irvine, because I've actually performed at the Irvine Cosmos for almost the last 10 years. So I've got quite the collection of t-shirts, caps, mugs, uh, you name it. But uh, it is a pretty cool, cool t-shirt. Uh, but I don't think I have one from the Davis program, so we'll have to fix that. Yeah. <laughs> But it's only my second time here, so that, that you have a good, good excuse. Yes, sir, what's your question? Uh, 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 I, I, I will, I will tr refrain from giving a brief answer to that question. Uh, other questions? What else uh, outside the Clinton era? Yes, sir. How'd I do the card trick, she says. OK, if everyone asks at the same time, how'd you do it? How did you do it? I did it very well. <laughs> that is the only part of my show I can't reveal to you. I would get kicked out of the Magic Castle if I taught you that one. But anything, everything else that I did, or beyond that, I'm willing to uh, attempt to answer. Yes, sir, what's your question? How to figure out the birthdays. OK, that, uh, that I'm willing to share with you. Um, now, that, by that, you mean figuring out the day of the week of the birthdays? Um, it's probably the most practical thing that I do, because it's not every day that someone walks up and asks you to square a three-digit number, but it is every day that someone will mention a date to you, and it's very handy to be able to instantly figure out what day of the week that will be on. I swear I use this skill every day of my life. So let's start now. So let's begin with figuring out the day of the week for any date this year, 2014. And then we'll do next year, and the year after that, and then the rest of your lives. And if you want, we can go take it back into the past and do birthdays and such. But um, for starters, every year gets a code number. And the code number for 2014 happens to be 3. So just take that on faith for now. I'll tell you where that comes later if you want. Next, uh, we have a code for every day of the week. Monday through Sunday, and the code numbers for those are simply 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and Sunday is 7 or 0. And that's very easy to remember because Monday is one day, Tuesday is literally 
Tuesday. Wednesday with the W on your finger with the W on your fingers gives you the three. Thursday is four's day. Friday is five day. Saturday is sixer day. Sunday is seven day. Or Sunday is none day. Or if you're Catholic, Sunday is none day. Okay, great. <laughs> Next, we need a code for every um, month of the year. And this is the trick. This is the hardest part to remember because it's not like 1 through 12 in order. Instead, the codes for the months are 6225035146246224. And to make it worse, if it's a leap year, the codes for January and February are one smaller. They're 5 and 1. Now, how are you supposed to remember that? I'll even give you very quickly some mnemonics for learning this list. Okay, so in one minute, I'll give you a mnemonic for every one of these um, every one of these numbers. So, for example, January is winter, and winter has six letters. February is month number two. March to the beat of the drum. April has five letters, or April Fools, Fools has five letters. May is zero. If you have a sandwich, you might want to hold the May O, is how I remember that. A June bug, bug has three letters. In July, last week, you look in the sky and you see a lot of fiberworks in the sky, is the best I have for that. August begins with A, the first letter. September is fall, which has four letters. October, you might think of tricks or treats. They have six letters, or tricks rhymes with six. November, you might have two pieces of turkey on Thanksgiving, turkey spelled with a two. And finally, December is the last month, and last has four letters. Now, I went through those quickly, but if I quizzed you now, you'd probably get half of them right away, and you spend five minutes practicing this list, and you'll know it inside out. Once you do, you can now figure out the day of the week for any date this year. Someone give me their birthday, and I'll, we'll figure out what day it will be this year. Go ahead. What's your birthday? August 15, you say? Now, for 2014, what do we do? We say August has a month code of what? One, right? August began with A, which was one. OK. The 15th, we add 15. And for 2014, we always add 3, because I said so. Add those three numbers together, and we get 19. Now, if you wanted to, you could count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, until you get to 19. But you don't have to do that, because every seven days, the week repeats. So you could add or subtract any multiple of 7, and that won't change the day of the week. What's the biggest multiple of 7 I can subtract from 19? 14 to get 5, and 5 day is Friday, so your birthday this year will be on a Friday. Let's do one more example just to make sure everyone's got it. How about one more, one more birthday? Uh, go ahead. What's your birthday? June 25th. Okay, so you just had this one, so you'll remember it. June 25th. June it has a code of 3, a June bug. For the 25th, we add 25. For 2014, we still add 3. Add 3 plus 25 plus 3, we get 31. And since we're working mod 7, we subtract. What's the biggest multiple of 7 to subtract? 28 to get 3. And day number 3 is Wednesday. So your birthday this year was on a Wednesday, was it not? So. Now you can figure out the, the day of the week for any date this year. But what about next year? Well, what usually happens to your birthday as you go from one year to the next? It goes up a day, usually. Why? Because usually you have 365 days between your birthday, and 364 happens to be a multiple of 7. 7 times 52 is 364. So if every year had 364 days, then your birthday would be on the same day each year. That would be boring, and that's why they don't do it that way. 
and something about the Earth and the Sun, right? But with 365 days, that causes the bump of one day. So all we have to do for 2015 is give it a year code of four, and everything else stays the same. Now, 2016, that's a leap year. So you're going to have 366 days between your birthdays, probably. And with 366, that causes a bump of two. So the year code for 2016 will be six. Right, we leap over the five to get six. Notice, by the way, if you were born in January or February, that's why the, the, the month codes here are one smaller. It's because the year has not leaped yet. Um, 2017, that's not a leap year, so the, a month co the year code for that will be 7. But since I'm going to be subtracting 7s when I'm done with everything, I can subtract 7 right now and make that 0, and that'll be easier to work with. So the code for 2017 is 0. 2018 will be 1, 2019 will be 2, 2020 is a leap year, it'll be 4, and now you're set for the rest of your life. Now, if you want to go back in the past, and because you guys pick things up so quickly, I'll show you how to do that. Um, what about going back into the past? Well, the only real pieces of information you need to know is 2000, I defined to have a, a year code of zero. OK, just because that, now I chose 2000 to be zero. I chose the month codes, from the, the day codes, from Monday to Sunday to go one through seven like that, because I wanted to start with Monday and make Tuesday be Tuesday. And then it, once I fixed those, th those pieces of information, then that forced the strange looking month codes that we have here. Now, um, uh, now, knowing that 2000 has a year code of zero, why would that make 2014 have a year code of three? Well. Between 2000 and 2014, we have 14 years. So the calendar is going to shift 14 times plus an extra time for each leap year. Right? We're going to have leap years in 2004, 8, and 12. So I'm going to have 14 shifts plus three more shifts to make that 17. So the year code for 2014 is 17. But since I can subtract multiples of 7, 17 minus 14 is 3. That's why 2014 has a year code of 3. The only other useful information for you is that 1900 gets a year code of 1. So the, the, the calendars in the 1900s are one shifted from the calendars in the 2000s. So if 2014 has a year code of 3, then 1914 will be one bigger. We'll have a year code of 4. Here, let's do one last example of that using, a, uh, as I was going through the room, I heard years like 1998. Now, we can figure out the year code two different ways. The, 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 the sort of the cheap way is knowing 2000 has a year code of 0, can we work out what 1998 had to be? Now, be careful. Is 2000 a leap year? It is a leap year. It was and is a leap year. OK, so that means 1999 had to have a year code of what? Five, right? Because if two, 1999 was five, 2000 being a leap year, we would leap over the six to get seven, which is the same as zero. So that means 1998 had a year code of four. Now, we can also work that out by taking 98, that's the last two digits of the year, plus a quarter of 98, that's counting the leap years. You get 24.5, but you can ignore the decimal point, plus one more because we're in the 1900s. Right? We're using the fact that 1900 has a year code of 1. Add those numbers together, and it's, you get 1, 2, 3. Subtract the biggest multiple of 7, which in this case is 119, and you get 4, which matches up with the 4 that we have there. Okay? So that's all you need to know. 2000 is 0, 1900 is 1, 1800 is 3, 1700 is 5, 
1,600, we're back to seven or zero, and then the calendar cycles every 400 years. So using that pattern, you can figure out any date in history. Okay? So that's, uh, that's that. Other questions? Let's uh, switch topics. What else would you like to know? Sir? How do I multiply two-digit numbers together? How do I square numbers together? Let me start with your first question was, how do I multiply any two two-digit numbers together? And then I'll show you a really fast way of squaring numbers. Give me a, give me a two-digit number, sir. 46. 46. And another two-digit number, please. 78. OK, 46 times 78. That's actually a pretty hard one. I get 3,588. Um, and uh, yeah, that's right. Um, so, but, but let me show you. And that was, a, that was a tricky one. That was a very tricky one, because neither of these numbers were very factorable. I, uh, uh, there, neither was prime, but I like it if I can factor them into one-digit numbers. You know, this is 23 times 2. This is 26 times 3. I suppose I could have done 23 times 26 times 6. But that's too much to keep in memory. What I did, what, what I did for this problem was I took 78 and said that number is 80 minus 2. And 80 times 46 is 3680. Minus 2 times 46, I'm subtracting 92. How do I subtract 92? I can subtract 100 and add 8 back to get 3,588. OK, so that's, now normally when I do a multiplication problem of two digit numbers, I'm either using what you saw here, the subtraction method, or I'll, if I broke 46 as 40 plus 6, that's called the addition method, right? 40 times 78 plus 6 times 78. But my preferred method would be the factoring method. So let's say you had asked me to do 45 times 78. That would have been a much easier problem, because I'd factor 45 as 5 times 9. Then I would do 78 times 5 times 9, 78 times 5. Oh, and one thing. When I, so 78 times 5 is 390. But let me say one thing, is when I do all, all of my multiplication, and in fact, this may be the most important part of the lecture. If there's only one thing you remember, remember this. I do all of my multiplication and all my mental arithmetic from left to right. So for example, if I do 78 times 5, I do 5 times 70, 350, plus 5 times 8, 40. 350 plus 40 is 390. Now I have an easier problem, 390 times 9. You can do that as 400 minus 10, or I would just do 9 times 300 is 2,700. 9 times 90 is 810. 2,700 plus 810 is 3,510. What I love about a mental arithmetic, I still do, is that you can take a problem, often do it lots and lots of different ways, and you'd still get the same answer. Like, let's say I took, instead of 45 as 5 times 9, suppose I did 9 times 5. I just noticed, hey, that's pretty cool. If you do 78 times 9, you know what you get? 630 plus 72 is 702 times 5. And that's got that nice juicy 0 in the middle. I like zeros. And 702 times 5, that's an easier multiplication than 390 times 9. right? 702 times 5 is 3,510, which is the same answer as we got before. Anyway, for me, it's, it's, it's playing with the numbers, finding different ways of manipulating them. But let me show you something. If I, if I lost you on part of this, let me show you something that you'll find a lot easier to do. You saw me squaring numbers earlier today. Let me show you the method I use for squaring two-digit numbers, three-digit numbers, and higher. Give us a small two-digit number as our first example. 17 squared is 289, and here's how I do it. Now, 17 is not a bad number to multiply, but what number close to 17 is much easier? 
20. So I'll go up 3 to 20. Now, whatever comes up must come down. If I go up 3 to 20, I have to balance it by going down 3 to 14. So the first part of the calculation is I do 20 times 14. 20, now, 20 times 14 is what? Well, 2 times 14 is 28. So 20 times 14 is 280. Almost done. All we have to add to this is the square of the number we went up and down. We went up and down 3. 3 squared is 9. And there's your answer, 289. Pretty cool. Let's do a couple more examples. I want to make sure you all get good at these. How about another two-digit number, please? It could be larger. That's fine. 63. This time, the nearest easy number would be 60. So I go down 3 to 60. Therefore, I go up to what number? 66. Now let's do 60 times 66. Now I'll attach the friendly 0 at the end. 6 times 66. Let's do it from left to right. 6 times 60 is what? 360. 6 times 6 is, say it, 36. 360 plus 36 is 396. 396. Attach the 0. Now you have 3,960. What do we add to that? The square of 3, which is 9. And you can basically be attaching the 9 as you're doing this to get 3,969. All right? Does that make sense? Now, why does this work? OK, so quickly, what's going on here is if you're, you know, you're squaring the number a, what am I telling you to do? Take a and go up some distance to an easy number, go down that same distance to another number, multiply them together, and then add what? d squared. Will that always work? Sure, because if you take a plus d times a minus d, you get a squared minus d squared. When you add the d squared, the d's go away, and you're left with a squared. So it's really just simple algebra, right? I know you've never seen difference of squares put to any practical use before, right? But that's all it is. And, uh, and I don't think of the algebra as I do it, but it, it's comforting to know that, you know that this process will always work. OK, now it's your turn. I'm going to give you a problem. And uh, to make it more interesting, I will offer a prize to the first person to get the answer. Now, I brought with me some of my DVD courses. Here, this is my most popular one on the secrets of mental math how to do math in your head faster than a calculator. Uh, it sells online for $200. I sell it here for $30. But it will be free for the first person who can do the next problem. Now, technically, I should probably give it to the last person who could do the next problem, because they need it more. But, <laughs> but we don't have that much time. All right. so. When you think you have the answer, just raise your hand. Don't blurt it out, or you'll be disqualified. Uh, and I will point to you, and you got to say it right away, or I'll go to someone else, all right? So the secrets of mental math, dumps of two DVDs, a workbook, and everything you'd ever want to know about mental math to the next person who can square the following number. In your head, no calculators. Not even paper. I want you to do this mentally. Oh, yeah. No paper. Man, and by the way, if you were doing it on paper, you, you, know, you, you would get beaten out by someone who does it in their head. Once you get good at this, mental math is even faster than paper. All right, here we go. I want you to square the number 98. Whoa. Think of what you'll go up to, what you'll go down to, multiply and add. I saw your hand up immediately. What did you get as the answer? Give them a round of applause. Now, that hand went up so fast, I just have one question. Do you have my book or DVD already? OK, well, you do now. There you go. Give them a round of applause. That was quite. <laughs>
That was stupendously quick. Uh, so what did you do, I hope? You went up 2 to 100, down 2 to 96. 96 times 100 is 9,600, plus the square of 2, which is 4, to get 9,604. Give another round of applause. That was great. <laughs> All right, but briefly, let me take this one step further and show you how you would square a three-digit number. Because after a while, once you get good at squaring two-digit numbers, a lot of the two-digit numbers, especially the lower ones, the ones under 50, will become memorized. And, and that's a good thing. But um, once you have that, then it's not too hard to square three-digit numbers. Give us a, a three-digit number as an example. 321. OK, here we go, it, which is 103,041, by the way. OK, so 321, how to square that? I go down. When I square a three-digit number, I go up or down to the nearest 100. OK, not the nearest mul multiple of 10, but the nearest multiple of 100. So I'll go down 21 to 300, up 21 to 342. Then I do 300 times 342. We'll ignore the two friendly zeros at the end and do 3 times 342. 3 times 300 is, say it, 900. 3 times 40 is 120. 900 plus 120 is 1,020. 3 times 2 is 6. So now we have 1,026. That's 102,600. Add to that the square of 21, which I know is 441. You could calculate as 20 times 22 plus 1 squared, and you get 441. Add them as you're saying it. 102,600 plus 441. I can see that it starts off 103,000. And then in my head, I'll do 600 plus the 441 to get the 041. And that's literally what I'm doing when I'm squaring that. I don't have that answer memorized, I, but I, I, because I'm doing it left to right, I can start to say my answer almost from the very beginning of the calculation. Okay, So that's, that's what's going on there. If I'm squaring a four-digit number, well, then I have to um, go up or down to the nearest 1,000. But then I start running into memory troubles. But I, and I could tell you about that, but we all, we're, we're almost down to five, 10 minutes, so I don't want to go. Um, I can go into that if you want. I can show you how to memorize 100 digits of pi. Uh, I can show you whatever you're interested in. We got five or 10 minutes left. What would you What would you like? Yes, sir. The magic square, the birthday magic square. Okay, I'll show you that one. Now, I don't usually explain that to my audiences, but to, but I was since I didn't agree to the card trick, I'll have to show you this one. Now, the reason. Magicians don't like to reveal their secrets is we've all made the mistake before, and we never get the reaction we want. We want people to say, wow, that's clever. You're good. <laughs> but you never do. I mean, how have you reacted most of the time someone's explained a magic trick to you? Oh, yeah, that was dumb. I thought you were good, but <laughs> I just wasn't paying attention. So. Because you asked nicely, I will show you the secret of the magic square. But just remember how impressed you were before I gave you the explanation. All right? Is that a deal? OK, now you asked, so I'll do your birthday if you like. What is your birthday? August 1st, 1997. OK, so August 1st, 1997. 8197. Now, the first step in creating the magic square, and it's important, is you have to add these four numbers correctly. Because <laughs> if you make a mistake here, there's no recovery, all right? So 8 plus 1 is 9, plus 9 is 18, plus 7 is 25. So I write that nice and big so you can see it, and so can I. Now, because you've seen the trick before with, with, with Camille's magic square, you know that the birthday not only appears in the top row, but also in the four corners. So what number is going to go here? One, right, straight from there. And that's the first number that I write down. And what number is going to go here? Nine, but that's actually the last number that I write down, because I want to keep it a surprise. 
Next, I go up the diagonal. I always go in the same order. I start by going up the diagonal. And the secret basically is this. You could put any number you want here. And then everything else from there is going to be forced. The only number you don't want to put there is the number that's sitting in this third square, the number 9. Because if you do, everything will add up to 25, but it will be the same four numbers in every row and column, 8, 1, 9, and 7 in some order. And that won't look very magical. On the other hand, the farther you get away from this number, the more likely it is that negative numbers will show up. And I try to avoid those if possible. So all I do is I take this number, 9, and I add 1 to it. So if it's 9, I make it 10. And now it becomes like the easiest Sudoku you've ever tried. Well, you know that this diagonal will have to add up to 25. At the moment, it adds up to what? 1 plus 10 plus 7 is 18. So what has to go here to get 25? 7. And so I put the 7 there. Next, I go to this group of four, this quadrant here, 7, 9, and 7. I know that this group of four will add up to 25. Right now, it adds up to 23, so that means this number has to be 2. Then I'll go to the, this group of four over here. Right? I want these four squares to add up. I've got 9, 7, and 1, which is 17. That makes this number 8. Then I'll go to this group of four back here, these four, one, two, three, four. They're adding up to 17. That makes that an eight. Now, you may remember with Camille's magic square, I said don't try to get this group of four or that group of four to add up. They will not work. And so that's the bad news. The good news is the way the algebra works out, these two numbers will always be the same and those two numbers will always be the same. So all you have to do is slide this number down. There's another 8 for you. And check it out. This column adds up to 25. Then I run to the middle. 10, 8, and 7 is 25. That makes that a 0. 10, 8, and 1 is 19. That makes this a 6. 10, 6, and 0 is 16. Uh, that makes that a 9. Your brain's getting tired from all the adding and subtracting. So I save the easiest parts for last. This number is going to be what? 7. This number is going to be what? 9. And that's the secret of the magic square. Thank you very much. <laughs> um, all right, before I launch into my grand finale, I have two very quick commercials. Uh, first, um, let me do a quick commercial for my DVDs. I mentioned them earlier. If people are interested, I brought a, just a few extras along with me. I have one DV, D, DVD course on the secrets of mental math, mental addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, uh, squaring numbers, cubing numbers, uh, calculating birthdays, memorizing numbers, everything I know about mental math uh, for $30, which is pretty insulting if you think about it. But um, there it is. It comes with a workbook with hundreds of problems, and it's got uh, two DVDs with everything uh, you want. I have a course on the joy of mathematics, which is middle school and high school level math, everything from algebra to calculus, including fun lectures on the joy of pi, the joy of e, the joy of Fibonacci numbers, infinity, mathematical games, mathematical magic. This has four DVDs. It's $50. Um, I have a course on the mathematics of games and puzzles, which is you know, the math behind casino games like poker, blackjack, how to count cards, the uh, uh, backgammon is my favorite game, poker, uh, how to solve a Rubik's Cube, how to solve any Sudoku. Um, this is my newest course. Again, they, they sell this online for over $200. I sell it to students for $40. And finally, I have a course on discrete mathematics. That's the mathematics that I, that's my specialty. It's the mathematics of, of computer science and cryptography, combinatorics, number theory, graph theory. That also, it's four DVDs, also sells for $50. Um, if you get all of them, there's a big discount. Um, and uh, OK, so that's my commercial for my DVDs. Now, where I've taught combinatorics and discrete math for the last 25 years, Whenever I'm in front of a bright group like this, they want me to announce this. I teach down in Southern California at Harvey Mudd College. 
Harvey Mudd. How many of you have heard of Harvey Mudd College before? Oh, I'm so glad to say, hear that. Ten years ago, I would not I had, I would have had quite the opposite reaction. But I'm glad to see that, that you guys have heard of Harvey Mudd. Uh, until this point, I used to have to say, you know, if you say Harvey Mudd quickly, it sounds like Harvard Med. <laughs> Much more impressive, right? My grandmother still thinks I'm at Harvard Med, you know. He's a doctor, you know. Anyway. Um, it, it, uh, Harvey Mudd College um, is in Claremont, California, near Los Angeles. Uh, has uh, 800 students, all of whom major in math or science or engineering. One third of the coursework is in the liberal arts and the fine arts. One third of our students go on to get PhDs. That's like the second highest percent in the nation. Uh, we are on the top of the list of payscale.org for highest mid-career salary of any college or university in the country. So anyway, for those of you who are planning to apply to schools like Caltech, MIT, Stanford, Berkeley, please add Harvey Mudd College to your list, and I will potentially be one of your math professors. OK, so finally, um, let me wrap things up with my grand finale, something I alluded to at the beginning when we had those large calculators on stage. If you have a large calculator, feel free to bring it out. I'm going to try to square a five-digit number, but to make my job more interesting for you as well as for me, I'm going to do this last problem thinking out loud so you can actually honestly hear what's going on in my mind while I do a calculation of this size. Let's create a five-digit number. How about, uh, how about uh, fourth row? One, two, three, four, five. Call it a single digit. That'll be my five-digit number. Go ahead. Seven. Three. Oh, was that a five? Five. Six. What was that? Nine. 73,569 squared. Yuck. Let me explain to you how I'm going to attempt this problem. I'm going to break the problem down into three parts. I'll do 73,000 squared plus 569 squared plus 73,000 times 569 times 2. Add all those numbers together, and with any luck, arrive at the answer. Now let me recap. Thank you. While I explain something else. As I do this last calculation, you will hear certain words in addition to numbers creep into the calculation. Let me explain what that is. These words are part of a phonetic code, a mnemonic device that I use that allows me to convert numbers into words. I store them as words and later on retrieve them as numbers. I know it sounds complicated. It's not. I just don't want you to think you're seeing something out of Rain Man here. There's definitely a method to my madness. One last instruction for my judges with calculators. Now, who's got an answer? We'll raise their hand, a few of you. You should have a 10-digit answer beginning with 5, ending with 1. In between, I don't know yet. There's at least a 50% chance that I'll make a mistake somewhere in between. If I do, don't tell me what the mistake is. Just say you're close or something, and I'll try and figure it out, which can be pretty entertaining in itself. If, however, I am right, whatever you do, don't keep it to yourselves. Make sure everybody knows that I got the answer right, because this is my big finish, OK? So without any more stalling, here we go. I'll start the problem in the middle with 73 times 569. Now, that's 570 minus 1. I'll take advantage of that. 73 times 57 is 3990 plus 171 is 4,161. That's 41,610. 41,610 minus 73 is 41,000. 537, 41,537, double that to get 83,074. 83,074 becomes fume scar. Fume scar is 83,074. That seems right, I'll go on. Fume scar, okay. Next, I do 73 squared, which is 5329, so I could say 5 billion. Take the 329, add that to fume. 329 plus 83 is 412. Million, scar, scar. OK, finally, we do 569 squared. That's 600 times 538 plus 31 squared. 322,800 plus 961 is 323,761. Uh, 
uh, cat cash, cash it if I need to cash it, take the 323, <coughs> add that to SCAR to get 397,761. Good. <laughs> Thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed Math and Magic. I'm Arthur Benjamin. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, everybody, for coming. Um, let's give Art one more round.